Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel many times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, many different styles, and I would say that this brewery are in fact famous for doing that, doing lots of different styles of beer and releasing lots of different things. One of the most prolific breweries in Sweden, in fact. But the beer that we're going to have a look at today is a style that I've not had from them before, and this beer is supposed to be quite nice and it's also going to be a regular from them actually as well which is kind of unusual for this brewery so very curious to see what this is going to have in store for us hopefully it's another good beer hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always i hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one i always enjoy trying the new beers from these guys so for this review then we are going to head up towards gothenburg once again utebori as you would say in swedish the swedish craft beer capital up there on the west coast got to get that gothenburg catchphrase in for the gothenburg beers because it is just channel tradition these days and for this review then, we are going to return to Bibliotech. So this beer is called Premium Pilsner. It comes in at 5% ABV and it's a Pilsner in the German style. Uh, according to the Bibliotech numbering system, this is number 327 and it was released first as part of the local Osmoska League Disortiment through System Bolaget for February of 2022. So uh, yeah, this should be really nice. Uh, this one just caught my eye. As you'll know, if you've watched the channel over the last kind of year two years i've been really getting into laggers again over that over that period of time and uh, when i saw that beer blue tech were going to have a go at one that just really kind of piqued my interest because we've had some really good you know west coast black uh new england ipas from them over the years but a lager is just something as far as i know that i've never had from them um yeah i really i don't think i've had anything not even like a keller beer or, uh, or something like that. So when I saw this, I thought, you know, we need to have a go at this. And it was pretty cheap as well. But as you can see, the artwork on this one is substantially different from what we normally get from Beer Bibliotech. And it's also a half litre can, which generally speaking for Sweden is quite unusual because normally you'd get a 440 or a 330. So yeah, a few interesting points about this, but this is going to be one of the regular beers uh, in Sistembo Lagat, along with the Moment of Clarity, which was originally the GBG Beer Week beer for 2017. That one's been around for quite a long time, actually. But let's crack on with this then and see how we go. It feels like it's my first Beer Bibliotech review in quite a wee while. So yeah, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Beer Bibliotech before, and we will no doubt return to these guys in the near future. I think I've got another beer to review from them this month. But there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefetch or whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the swedish beers that i've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Bibliotech. So Bibliotech, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Gothenburg, Utebori, and the company was founded back in 2013 by a multinational group of friends. This is Adam Norman, who's from Australia, Richard Bull, who's from New Zealand, Anders Hedlund, who is Swedish, and then Darl Denecker, who comes from South Africa. So Adam and Richard ran Bar Doppio in Gothenburg, and then Daryl and Anders were regular customers, and they often just used to sit together and talk about beer, and then one day they decided they were going to buy a brew kit and start brewing their own, and it went very well for them. Uh, but the original brewery was in the old Klippan Sugar Building, which is a really nice old building, very close to the old Carnegie Brewery in Gothenburg, quite a famous company in fact, and I say this in almost every beer below tech video I do, I still need to review the old Carnegie Porter um, but the original brew kit that they had was from Brew Fab in Scotland and in their first year they produced around 38 different varieties of beer and that is of course what they really went on to become famous for was being very prolific with their recipe output but all of the beers are brewed in or were brewed in very small batches and this was basically them wanting to stick to their kind of home brewing roots and so um, for a long time they've had no fixed range of beer I think they still don't have really a fixed range of beer apart from one or two uh, and they're always brewing brand new beers so yeah you will see certain beers that are popular reoccurring every so often a passion for gingers is one 
um, the uh, moment of clarity. This is going to be a regular beer. And you'll also see the eternal dankness and eternal darkness uh, appearing every year with new, with slightly kind of tweaked recipes, if you like. So there are there are regular beers, but there's no uh, kind of fixed core range, I guess you could say, with uh, with Beer Blue Tech. That's the main thing. Uh, but in 2015, they opened a second brewery in Kungston, which is where they now have their main tap room and run their main brewing operations. The old brewery, from what I understand, is used for producing sour beers, and they're also working on a, or they, all, they do have a barrel aging project in this new brewery as well. Although I've never tried a barrel aged beer from Beer Blue Tech, so I need to see where those are actually released and see if I can get a hold of some of them because I've just I've never ever come across any of them. Uh, but over the years, they've continued to develop different recipes, and they're well over, as you can see from the. The numbers there, they are well over 300 now when it comes to it. Uh, but the current brewmaster is the Italian Riccardo Boff, who apparently speaks with a Scottish accent because he studied brewing and distilling at Harriet Watt in Edinburgh. So he worked for a period of time at Pilot Brewery in Scotland, uh, Kramer Lee in South Korea, and then he moved to Gothenburg and has been quite heavily involved in the beer scene there. But he joined Beer Blue Tech in late 2020, and then the following year, in early 2021, they purchased a 750-litre distillery and started a spirits brand, which is called Wet City, and they released their gins through System Bolaga in late, I think it was August or September time, of 2021 and apparently that is going quite well for them uh, but the idea behind the name Beerbliotech is that they want to brew a wide variety of beers so customers can always learn something new about a different hop variety a different malt a different yeast or whatever but uh, uh, Bibliotech of course uh, is the Latin I think it was Latin they derived it from uh, but Bibliotech is um, the Latin for a uh, library but of course it's kind of similar it's the same in Swedish actually bibliotech yeah but uh, basically the idea is for them to be a concept the same concept as a library but with lots of different beers and as of February 2022 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have released uh, 310 different kinds of beer but as we said earlier this one is number 327 in their recipe menu. So there probably are some that are in the barrels and stuff like this as well. I know that one or two batches have been kind of dropped because they just didn't turn out uh, as they had hoped. But uh, yeah, for, you know, that's a pretty good rate of return out of 327 recipes. According to Untap, they've released 310 of them. So uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. But that's all I can really tell you about Beer Tech for the moment. Cool to see that these guys are getting into spirits as well. But uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about them, you can check out the brewery website. They've got a nice blog on there that you can use to keep up to date. There's all the usual social media and stuff down there. You can check out, if you want to learn more about the different beers and stuff that they've done, uh, you can also check out the untapped rate beer and uh, beer advocate pages. And I'm sure the social medias will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on. But uh, yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see how we go. I'm very curious to see how this turns out. So as I mentioned earlier, this one is a half litre can. I think I paid about 30 Swedish kroner for this, so it's roughly about three euros. Here you can see at the bottom of the can there, there is the Beer Bibliothek uh, symbol from Gothenburg. Swedish craft beer in the back. This is one thing I love about uh, Beer Bibliothek is they always say, yes, Swedish craft beer, and they've also got that on the front there too. But yeah, this cost, I believe, 30 Swedish kroner, so about three euros, somewhere in the region of like two pounds fifty sterling, and would that be in the region of like three dollars fifty American, something like that, maybe three dollars seventy five. But yeah, five percent Pilsner beer, this one, brewed in the German style, from what I understand. But uh, yeah, remember of course Pilsners are lager beers, which means they undergo a cold temperature fermentation, bottom fermenting yeast. Um, that's usually between you know eight to twelve degrees Celsius. Ales of course have top fermenting yeast, and their fermentation takes place. At, um, at between yeah, 15 and 18 degrees Celsius. So the Pilsner, of course, I'm saying that this is a German style Pilsner. The Pilsner beer originated in the city of Pilsen, which is now the Czech Republic, formerly the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It was brewed by a Bavarian brewer who only lasted in Pilsen for about two years because apparently he was not a very nice man. Uh, and that beer is today Pilsner Urkel or Pozhensky Prazdroy, as the, uh, the Czechs call it. But uh, yeah, these days I find the Czech Pilsners tend to be a little bit more kind of bready and yeasty and things like this and very smooth, whereas the German Pilsners, they tend to be, um, they tend to be a little bit kind of drier and crisper actually. So um, yeah, that's an interesting thing to note today, but most of the Pilsners that are brewed in foreign countries tend to be the German ones rather than the Czech ones in my experience. But uh, yeah, a little bit about the lager beer for you and the Pilsner. There you can see plain silver top on the can with this one. But let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then. 
very curious to see what this is going to have in store for us. So, there we go. I wonder if it'll be a little bit hazy as well, actually. Oh, now that does look quite nice. And I tell you something, it smells very authentic as well. And as I've said to you in previous reviews, for me, when it comes to these... Um, when it comes to these uh, more kind of traditional style beers, that's what I'm always looking for. When it comes to a Hellas, I want it to taste like the ones you would get in uh, in Germany. And I can tell you just from the little whiff I got of the aroma there, I think this one is going to be pretty spot on. But as you know, I do like this brewery. I know that these guys are very capable. So I do have high expectations at the same time. But anyway, as you can see, um, before the head disappears, this beer poured with just under a finger, maybe about a three quarter finger of a frothy, I would say perfect white head there, you can see that on the camera, looks very good, uh, and the colour of this one is as you would expect, a lovely kind of bright golden straw yellow, there is a little bit of a natural kind of haze to this one, but yeah otherwise it is pretty, um, pretty much as you would kind of expect, so remember the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use, this goes a long way to determining your EBC rating, uh, two, the length of your wort boil is going to play a role. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise, unless you get a darker colour of beer. Um, but usually a lager beer is going to undergo 90, uh, 90 minutes. And, and mainly with these, it is the kind of malts that, that uh, give you the colour. Of course, you've got uh, Hellas, uh, Dunkel, Schwarz beers and Doppelbox and stuff like that, all different colours. But yeah, for a kind of Pilsner beer, you do expect a kind of bright yellow like this. But any barley's that you do, any adjuncts that you put in can also affect the colour, but with Pilsners, we don't really need to care about those because it's very rare that happens. But there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there, which has incidentally just faded away to be a really nice kind of thin foamy layer, and there's a bit of a thicker foamy ring around the, uh, the head there. But overall, it does look very, very nice. So... Uh, you can see, if I put my fingers behind the uh, the glass, you can see this beer does have a little bit of a natural haze to it. But um, yeah, it looks great. So um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to say about the appearance of this one. So we can move on to the aroma and see what we get from it. Oh yeah, that does smell very, very nice. Love these beers. I really love yeah, I do love a good Pilsner. Um, you know, for those of you who don't know, um, my I was introduced really to the idea of, you know, crazy flavoured beer by my German flatmate Daniel in Aberdeen back in like, you know, 2009, 2010. And uh, he moved to uh, to Bamberg after that. And that was, you know, we were drinking the Schlenkele Rauch beers. And then when I went to Germany later to study for a little while, that was when uh, I really got into Hellas and, and Weizens and stuff like this. So yeah, always been a big fan of these kind of, the more kind of German, Central European type beers. We say German, but you know, the Pilsner is a Czech style of beer. But this one is absolutely lovely. So you get the crispness out of the malt base, you get the big kind of grassy notes to it and just the wee touch of fruitiness. It's got everything you would want from an authentic Pilsner style beer. So hopefully the flavour profile lives up to that. But let's break down the aroma for you a wee bit more in depth. So the backbone of this beer, um, Definitely, you get a wee tiny touch of bread crust in this one. You can feel that just form. You can feel the the bread crust just kind of forming, uh, forming the the backbone of the beer. On top of that, there's definitely a little bit of a white bread in this one. I wouldn't be surprised if this one has like a straight up lager malt in it as well as a little bit of pilsner malt. I think the, the, some of the kind of breadyish aromas you're getting remind me of actually the Viking, uh, lager malt that I've had in some beers before. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's in here. Um, I think Hulia Brewery, they like to use these kind of things. And I'm sure the um, the Lipizzana that we had recently from, uh, is that Duck Pond? I think that was a Duck Pond beer, that one. The Lipizzana that we had from Duck Pond and also the Lager beer that we had from uh, Apex as well. Had I'm sure they used the Viking malt. There's just something very familiar about the, the Lager malt in this. So yeah, a little bit of bread crust smooth kind of slightly fluffy white bready character in there but at the same time it remains quite crisp but then on top of that you can smell what is definitely pilsner malt as i've explained before pilsner malt is a bit of a pain in the arse to describe for you in terms of aroma because if, but if you take the aroma in deeply it just gives you this really kind of crisp thing at the top of your nose and you can certainly smell that in this beer if you take the aroma in deeply so yeah the, the crispness that you get out of this beer 
is um is absolutely lovely the yeah a little bit of bread crust soft white bread in there and then yeah on top of that you get the pills and malty crispness there's definitely a wee bit of that McVitie's digestive kind of biscuity character out of this one too which I really really enjoy so yeah you can get you get that wee bit of sweetness that you want from the pills a bit it has the nice kind of uh, crispness uh, as well actually so yeah I really like how this one goes together from the malty side of things a lot of people kind of these days because of you know the IP and stuff people just focus on the hops but getting a good malt base in there getting an authentic malt base I think is, is hugely hugely important but yeah malty wise this one is very very nice so it gets a thumbs up from me for malt authenticity hoppy wise it's also very good uh, in the back of the nose you do get a little bit of that earthiness out of it which is, is a smooth earthiness i'm pretty sure this one is using like you know haller tower Titnanger, you know be using one of the different varieties of hops from those two areas difficult to pick out actually um what one it could be but you know you've got things like Pearl, Hercules that have got varying, you know, Saphir. You've got all of these different varieties that have slightly different alpha acids and things like this. So I'd be curious to know which one it is. I do get a little bit of a herbal quality in the green component too. And also a nice little bit of bright floral aromaticity. I don't find this one overly spicy, but I think the dominant character in the green component of this beer is more of a it is more of a kind of zesty, grassy character actually so yeah i really like uh, i do really like how this one goes about its business in the green component when it comes to the fruity side of things again it's it's pretty much what you would expect from the style you know there's maybe a little bit of a it has a little bit of that kind of grassy ester to it of course which is what you'd expect but behind that you know there's maybe like a teeny teeny little bit of a very slight apricot you know a little bit of like an oily pear and maybe a wee tiny touch of apples it's these kind of aromas that you're getting out of this one maybe a little tiny touch of sultana you know a little bit like dried apricot sultana sort of thing than a more oily peary apple sort of thing more pear than apple right enough but uh, yeah this has got everything you'd expect aroma wise from um german style pilsner so can't really say anything more about it than that it's got everything you'd want from this style so again thumbs up to uh to Beerbliotech for this one, by the looks of it, they've got the aroma spot on, so hopefully the flavour follows suit. But as I always say, take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But we are going to have a taste of this one now. So yeah, this one is the Premium Pilsner, a 5% German style Pilsner apparently, from uh, Beerbliotech in Gothenburg, Utebori on the Swedish West Coast. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, Skål, cheers. Ooh, that's interesting. I thought this beer was going to be a little bit more kind of hoppy and bitter than it actually is. But it's actually, first impression of it is that it's a more kind of slick and smooth and slightly oily Pilsner beer, this. So that's 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 definitely interesting. This one, um, it is, you know, in terms of its flavour profile and the sort of flavours you're getting from it, it's absolutely in line with what you would want from a traditional Pilsner, but just not quite as dry and crisp as some of the ones I've come across. So that's an interesting approach, actually. So I'm waiting to see whether that kind of thing is going to, um, whether those aspects of the beer are going to build a little bit later on. But that is very, very nice. You know, um, in the article I read on Beer News about this um, about this beer, and they were mentioning that Stieg Berriots had one that is simply called Ull, and it's a, a premium pilsner. Um, and I think it's I think this is quite a good idea, obviously, because in Seasonable, like to get a regular shelf space is quite a, it's quite a difficult thing. It's quite a bureaucratic thing. So I think it's cool that the the Swedish breweries are now trying to take some of the space away from the you know the big macro boys. Um, it's always good to see small business thrive. It's a sign of a very good economy, usually. So, yeah, um, this one, I can see this is going to go down very well, actually, because you can tell that it's a bit better quality. This is, you know, the quality that you're getting out of this beer is matching what you'd get from, you know, the the German the German breweries, you know, like the, the, you know, the Augustiners, the Paulaners and stuff like this. And it's good to see local breweries doing things like this, absolutely. So 
at all. The, the uh, yeah, in terms of what you'd want, uh, obviously this is not the craziest beer you're going to get from Beer Leo Tech. It's it's just it's a nice easy drinker, and that was the intention of it. But yeah, the one that Steve Beer it's have called Bull. Uh, Steve Beer it's also had a beer that was called Pilsner actually. I remember, and I was impressed with that too. I thought that was a very nicely done beer. So you never know. Maybe in the near future, uh, we'll be seeing. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll we'll be seeing um a few of the a few breweries like that. I know breweries at Fiend actually here in Skåne. They do a lager on quite a. They brew a big lager like this on a. Well, a lager on quite a big scale. So exciting times. I'm curious to see how this idea progresses with other Swedish breweries. In fact, but let's focus on this beer and break down the flavour for you a wee bit more. But this is nice. This you know from what I want from a pilsner, it's it's nice. It's just slightly more oily and slick. Bergen actually. So yeah, let's have a go at this. So, yeah, uh, backbone of the beer then is kind of similar to what I described in the, the aroma. So you can feel in that middle third of your palate, you can feel there's a nice kind of, you can feel there's a nice little bit of a kind of crisp bread crusty backbone there. On top of that, you've got a wee bit of a smoother white bready character. And I would say that the, the bready character in this one's actually a little bit more dense, and I do like that. Um, and of course, it's, it's interesting too, um, so in that middle third of the palate, bread crust, slightly more dense bread towards the back of that middle third of the palate. You do have a wee bit more of, um, yeah, you do have a little bit more of that kind of Pilsner, uh, that Pilsner malty crispness sort of thing, which I really like. So, yeah. The Pilsner Malt Christmas actually, it takes a wee while to come out and you will find that this beer, it builds in bitterness and it builds in dryness a bit later on. But that, as I was saying, the overall vibe of this beer is a little bit more of a wet and oily, slick um, lager. And yeah, I like that. So yeah, bread crust, dense, white bread in there, the Pilsner Malt dryness there on top of that. But then in the middle of the palate, there's like an oily circle in there. So you can feel a nice, you do feel a little bit of that kind of nice, wetter, um, there's a little bit of a, ni a, a nice more kind of wet McVitie's digestive it's got that, it's that little circle it's like quite an oily but slightly wet McVitie's digestive biscuity kind of thing so yeah that's really interesting for sure so that gets that definitely gets a thumbs up from me in that regard um yeah, hmm, interesting. So yeah, the in the dead centre of your palate, you can feel there's a wee touch of that kind of the more concentrated brown sugar. It's like a wee bit more of an oily, boozy, caramelly note. Then as you move further out from the centre of the palate, it becomes more of a kind of McVitie's digestive, biscuity, grainy sort of thing. So you can feel that it just gets a bit grainy and a bit more crisp and things as you go out toward the edge of the palate. Other than that, I don't think there's too much to say about the middle third of the palate in this one. So yeah. Uh, border region then between the border region between middle third and back third of your palate on top of the uh, in the, in that border region you get a little bit of a kind of bready you get a little bit of a kind of bready bready crusty build up sort of thing the base of that back third of the palate you've got a wee bit more of a, yeah you do have a wee bit more of a kind of bread crusty sort of thing then on top of that layer you've got a little bit of a thicker bready note there it does get a wee bit more greeny remember the more greeny bitter flavours come out toward the back of your palate and then on top of all of that you can feel a wee bit of the biscuity sweetness creeps over into the back third of the palate but not too much and then you've got a little bit of the yeasty character so there's a wee bit of a kind of crackery sort of thing to it yeah there's a wee bit of a sort of crackery thing to it um and you do get a wee bit of a more, you do get a wee touch of that just more grainy bread crusty character out of this beer too. So yeah, I really like how this one goes about its business, absolutely. So, on the, um, you know, on top of all of that, I don't think, um, on top of all of that, I don't, I don't think there's anything else we really need to say about the yeasty side of things. Yeah, it's 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 a nice, This beer is one that grows on me. As I say, it is an easy drinker. It's not the craziest thing you're going to get from the Blue Tech. But on the basis of this, I'd love to see how they would do. You know, like a a, a Keller beer. 
a German Keller beer. I think that would be interesting. And even, you know, a Dunkel and a Schwarz beer and stuff like this. I'd love to see them experiment a little bit more with lager beers because they're kind of showing with this that they are capable of doing the style. So, yeah, food for thought. But on the back third of your palate, as you can feel, the, the height of the flavour is a little bit taller. As you move further forward, it kind of condenses down and squashes together a wee bit more. And again, I think that works very, very nicely. So on the uh, hoppy side of things with this beer then, let's look at that. We've covered the malty side. In the back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness there. As you move further forward, it gets a little touch herbal. And as you push towards the kind of front corners of the palate, you get a little bit more... Uh, you do get a little bit more of a kind of floral, aromatic um, sort of thing to it. But this is not the hoppiest and most bitter of Pilsners. Definitely not. Definitely not in that sense. But yeah, a little touch of floral aromaticity there. Around the front curve of the palate, it's definitely a bit lighter and more grassy. So yeah, lighter. Yeah, definitely a little bit lighter and more grassy. And you also have a little bit of that... Um, Yeah, I think the grassiness is also quite wet. The, the green component of this beer is actually quite wet. But let's focus on that front third of the palate then, and the fruity side of the beer. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of that bready build up there. The base, the base of the, um, the front third of your tongue is a little bit more, yeah, you get a wee bit of a more kind of bread crusty sort of thing. And then, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have a bread crusty base sort of thing, and then on top of that, you get the nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just roll their way out. So for me, the um, how would you say the at the back of that front third of your palate, there's a wee bit more of a kind of there's a little bit of a concentrated. Um, you do get this. There's just a bit of a concentrated citrusy sort of thing, but as you come further forward, underneath it has a wee touch of like a sultana sort of thing. But then, yeah, very quickly it becomes that more oily, peary type flavour. It has got a wee bit of that kind of more oily, peary type thing. But then, very quickly, you start to get those more pungent, grassy esters out of this one. So yeah, the the fruity side of this beer is, I see, wee touch of sultana, wee touch of pear, but then quite grassy. And I think the further you go into the aftertaste with it, the grassy, zesty character in this beer really builds up so yeah it gets a nice um it, this beer builds up to be a little bit more dry and bitter but overall i would say it's quite slick and oily in a sense so yeah thumbs up from uh, from me this one overall I, I like this beer and i certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink more of it you know uh, in terms of having a kind of go-to beer if pilsner or is not around then uh, yeah this is pretty damn solid actually i like that absolutely like it so yeah, try this one or try the Stiegberg at Seoul. But there's, uh, the Swedish breweries, as I've told you for a long time, are very capable. And it's nice to see the laggers are getting a bit more attention. But yeah, let's round off this review with a little look at the mouthfeel then. So yeah, mouthfeel wise, I would say that this beer... Um, yeah, mouthfeel wise, I would say that this beer is definitely uh, kind of top end of light bodied. The carbonation is very smooth. It's got a lovely kind of slightly slick and slightly oily mouthfeel to it. But at the same time, it feels very clean. In terms of IBUs, I'd be surprised if this is over 20, to be honest with you. And the, the bitterness and stuff comes out a wee bit later on. I think that's fair to say. Um, the malt base, yeah, a little bit grainy and bready, but overall quite... It does build a little bit of crispness. It's just quite a slick, oily malt base more than anything. And the fruity side of the beer is a little bit oily and it has a wee bit of a dry, fruity character to it as well. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting beer and definitely cool to see Beer Bibliotech do something a bit different. So I would love to see them experiment and do, you know, if they're doing half litre cans, you know, do a Dunkel, do a, you know, a Czech, a uh, Svetli, a Letzak, whatever. Try the different Czech styles, try the different German styles. Uh, a Vienna Lager as well would be really interesting. And they've shown with this that they can they can do a job so i'd love to see be able to take play around with uh, with some different lager beers that would be very very cool but uh yeah that's all i can really say about this one very impressed with this this was the premium pilsner at five percent abv from be able to take in gothenburg definitely quite in keeping with the german style for sure not quite as kind of bready and things and creamy i guess you could say as the czech one so definitely 
a German Pilsner rather than anything. That's the only other comment I could make. But yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from, uh, from Beer Bibliotech. And we will no doubt return to these guys at some point in the future. In the meantime, though, check out my social media, check out their social media, and you will see me review another Beer Bibliotech beer a little bit later on, maybe in about a week or so. I'll film it. I'll film it quite soon and then put it up a little bit later. But yeah, until the next time, stand just now. I'll catch you later. Make sure you check out Beer Blue Tech from Gothenburg. This is a nice Pilsner beer. Slange you.